I want to reflect on some of the lessons we've learned in Victoria in our drive to reduce stillbirth. So in 2016, The Lancet released a huge series recalling to action high-income countries to prioritise reductions in stillbirth. In it, Australia was ranked 15th in the world for our stillbirth rate, a most welcomed finding. Yet the concern that was raised was that our stillbirth rate was still 30% higher than that of the highest performing countries, Finland, the Netherlands, Denmark, and others. This in itself has prompted three things in Victoria. First, the establishment of a National Centre of Research Excellence for Stillbirth in 2016. Second, a federal Senate inquiry into stillbirth research and education in 2018. And third, just last year, the launching of a national Australian stillbirth program, the Safer Baby Bundle. Now, the strongest risk factor for stillbirth is a condition called fetal growth restriction, or FGR, which refers to when a baby is not growing optimally in utero and hence is growth restricted. And to show you just how strong a risk factor FGR is for stillbirth, this figure here is taken from Jason Gardosi's work in the UK, which shows that FGR babies have a ninefold higher rate of stillbirth compared to healthy babies. But what is important is this next step. If we can detect the FGR pregnancy before birth, we can halve that risk of stillbirth for the affected baby. So with the intent to reduce stillbirth in 2012, Victoria introduced a statewide strategy to improve FGR detection. Specifically, an annual statewide performance indicator was introduced in the Perinatal Services Performance Indicators Report that publicly reports the rate of detection of FGR by named hospital. The indicator measures the proportion of severely growth-restricted babies born at or after 40 weeks gestation. A severely growth restricted baby is a baby with a birth weight below the third centile. And the rationale is that it is widely recognized that a baby with a birth weight below the third centile is growth restricted and therefore needs delivery prior to 40 weeks. And so those born after 40 weeks are likely not detected. Every maternity service across the state is assessed on this measure and provided feedback of their performance in an effort to drive our hospitals to better detect severe FGR. And that is exactly what it has done. This here is an interrupted time series analysis. On the left-hand axis, we have the percentage of severe FGR babies born at or after 40 weeks gestation, which is the definition of the performance indicator. On the x-axis, we have time. So for example, in 2000, almost 50% of severe FGR babies were undelivered by 40 weeks gestation. And this rate has been gradually trending down. This dotted line here represents the first year the performance indicator was introduced. So here we can see that after the performance indicator was introduced, there's been a significant improvement in the detection of severe FGR across the state. Not surprisingly, the improvements in detection have translated to a reduction in stillbirth. This figure here is showing us the rate of stillbirth in red for severe FGR babies. And in the period before the indicator was introduced, the rate of stillbirth was 13.6 deaths per thousand births, and now it is only 10.3 deaths per thousand births. This is equivalent to saving about 70 lives. But the question I asked was at what cost? In particular, there was this French study published in 2015 that found that half of babies suspected of FGR before birth were in fact normally grown. This is alarming. And so I asked, was this the case in Victoria? I looked at the number of babies that have been delivered early for suspected growth restriction over time in Victoria. And there's been a huge spike after the introduction of the performance indicator, up to 3,000 interventions in 2017. Now this spike would be very welcomed if all or most of these babies were small or growth restricted. And so I asked, what are the actual birth weight centiles for these babies? So here in black, we have those babies that had an actual birth weight below the third center. And here we can see the concern. The huge spike in early interventions for suspected FGR was not primarily because of better detection and earlier delivery of severe FGR babies. 
There definitely has been some improvement over time, but as a proportion of those delivered early for suspected FGR, it is quite low. In 2000, it represented about 30% of all our interventions for suspected FGR. Now, it is less than 15%. So by driving hospitals to improve their detection of FGR, we've actually become less specific at detecting those affected by severe FGR. This next line represents those babies that had an actual birth weight above the 10th centile, which are considered normally grown babies. And here we can see that the group of babies that has been most affected by our drive to improve FGR detection has not been those with an actual birth weight below the 3rd centile, but rather those with an actual birth weight above the 10th centile, normally grown babies. More than half of those 3,000 interventions for suspected FGR in 2017 were for babies with an actual birth weight above the 10th centile. And the problem with this is that it has been harmful. Inappropriate earlier delivery of these normally grown babies has more than doubled their rate of admission to the neonatal intensive care unit. So the lessons from Victoria seem to say that as we strive to detect more FGR babies and reduce stillbirth, we increasingly detect and harm more normally grown babies, that increasing the sensitivity of FGR detection decreases its specificity. And so the question is, where is the balance? And the answer, unfortunately, is we just don't know. But there is one way I believe we can move forward. It is famously said, what isn't measured cannot be improved. What is currently done in Victoria is we report an indicator that is designed to drive hospitals to improve their detection of FGR without thought towards harm. But this in itself is not sufficient. We need what's called a balance measure. A balance measure is a performance indicator that seeks to report the unintended consequences of an intervention. I have designed one that will report to hospitals whether they are inappropriately intervening in healthy babies who they think are growth restricted. So to see whether my balance measure would be effective, I decided to compare each Victorian hospital's performance on the existing severe FGI indicator with their performance on my balance measure. The aim was to see whether there are any hospitals who are detecting FGR well, but not at the cost of harming healthy babies. That is this next figure. So here on the X axis, we have hospital performance on the existing severe FGR measure. On the Y axis, we have hospital performance on my balance measure. And when I add in each hospital's performance as a dot, we see that there is huge variability across hospitals and there is no real relationship or correlation here between a hospital's performance on the existing severe FGI indicator and their performance on my balance measure. But even better than that, we can see that while many hospitals are in the top right quadrant and not performing well on both measures, there are still some hospitals in the bottom left quadrant who are detecting FGR well and not harming healthy babies significantly. This is our starting point for improvement. We can identify these hospitals, find out what they are doing, and then share their strategies to hospitals who aren't performing well. Over time, our hope is that by reporting both measures together, making unintended harm visible to all clinicians, we will start to see hospitals progressively move towards this bottom left quadrant of optimal performance where we are reducing stillbirth safely. So in summary, in Victoria, we have learned three things. First, that driving improved detection of FGR reduces stillbirth. Second, that driving improved detection of FGR leads to many normally grown babies being inappropriately delivered early. And third, that we currently lack an approach to reduce this unintended harm. Here I have proposed one, a balance measure, which will make unintended harm visible to all clinicians for the first time. My balance measure will be introduced into routine Victorian reporting later this year. And it has also been included in the National Australian Stillbirth Program, the Safer Baby Bundle, to help ensure that our efforts to reduce stillbirth are not simply offset by unintended harm to healthy babies. It is a good solution for today until we find the solution for tomorrow. Thank you very much.